The first known clowns can be traced back to ancient Egypt around 2400 BC, during the 5th dynasty. These early clowns were unique because they were also priests. Joseph Grimaldi was an English actor, comedian, and performer, who is widely regarded as the father of modern clowning. He is best known for his groundbreaking work in the early 19th century, which helped shape the image and style of clowns as we know them today. Grimaldi is credited with transforming the role of the clown in the traditional English pantomime and circus performances. He introduced a white face makeup with red lips and black eyebrows, which became a classic clown makeup style. Charles Dickens even wrote a biography of Joseph Grimaldi, titled Memoirs of Joseph Grimaldi in 1838. Dickens admired Grimaldi's talent and contribution to the world of entertainment. Grimaldi's influence on clowning extended beyond his lifetime. Many of his comedic techniques and characterizations are still used by clowns today. In one of his books, The Pickwick Papers, written in 1836, Dickens explored the idea of a clown who was dissolute and often drunk. In this story, he portrayed a clown who was not performing and was inspired by Grimaldi's son. This clown was intoxicated and looked very unhealthy, which was a stark contrast to his white face paint and clown costume. It's not surprising that Dickens portrayed Grimaldi's life in a way that was typical of Dickens' style, full of hardship. Dickens essentially showed that for every laugh Grimaldi brought to his audiences, he experienced an equal amount of suffering. Dickens had a big part in making people think of clowns as scary. Some even say he came up with the whole idea of scary clowns. He did this by creating a character who hurt himself to make people laugh. This made it tough to see the clown as just a funny character because you couldn't ignore the person behind the makeup. Many people liked Dickens' version of Grimaldi's story, and it made them think that behind the humor, there was something dark and troubled. In Britain, Grimaldi was a well-known clown, and in France, Jean Gaspard de Bureau's Pierrot, with his white-painted face, red lips, and black eyebrows, made French audiences happy without saying a word. But there was a big difference. Grimaldi had a sorrowful side to his character, whereas de Bureau had a darker and more sinister side. In 1836, de Bureau killed a boy with his walking stick after the boy insulted him on the street, although he was eventually cleared of the murder charge. Therefore, during that time, two of the most famous clowns had trouble personalities hidden behind their makeup. French literary critic Edmond de Goncourt, in his writings from 1876, expressed a view that the art of clowning had taken on a more frightening and unsettling quality. He described clowns as full of anxiety and apprehension, often performing acts that seem suicidal. Why so serious? They made exaggerated and wild gestures, engaging in frantic imitations reminiscent of individuals in a mental institution's courtyard. This observation reflects a perception of clowns as no longer purely humorous entertainers, but rather as figures with a disturbing and even manic quality to their performances. The first modern circus is often attributed to Philip Astley, an Englishman who opened the first circus in London in 1768. Astley's circus featured a circular ring where he showcased equestrian acts, such as horse riding tricks and acrobatics. He also included clowns, jugglers, and other entertainers in his performances. Astley's innovation was to combine various forms of entertainment into a single show with a circular arena, which allowed for better visibility of the acts. This concept became the template for the modern circus, and it eventually spread to other parts of Europe and the United States. In the late 19th century, England introduced the circus and its clowns to America, where the circus genre thrived. While the venues and humor changed, the image of troubled, sad, and even tragic clowns persisted. In the later 20th century, there was a significant transformation in the perception of clowns, with some clowns taking on malevolent and sinister connotations in popular culture. Two notable examples that contributed to this transformation are Stephen King's novel, Eat, and the infamous serial killer, John Wayne Gacy. 
In Stephen King's novel It, the character Pennywise the dancing clown is a malevolent and shape-shifting entity that preys on children's fears. The character's terrifying portrayal in the book and subsequent adaptations in film and television contributed to the popular association of clowns with horror and fear. John Wayne Gacy, an American serial killer, infamously known as Killer Clown performed at children's parties and charity events as Pogo the Clown. He was convicted of the murders of at least 33 young men and boys during the 1970s. He lured many of his victims with the promise of employment, money, or simply by impersonating a police officer. Gacy's crimes shocked the nation and led to his arrest, trial, and eventual conviction in 1980. Gacy's association with clowning added a disturbing layer to the fear of clowns. The phenomenon of clown sightings, which gained widespread attention in the early to mid-2010s, involved individuals dressing as clowns and engaging in unsettling or even threatening behavior in public spaces. Professional prankster has a warning tonight. Cut out the clown mask pranks. He's issuing the warning after he found himself at the end of a gun barrel. These incidents were often characterized by their bizarre and sometimes menacing nature, and they generated significant media coverage, sparking a mix of curiosity and fear. Creepy clown sightings are happening across the country and it's no laughing matter. The modern wave of clown sightings can be traced back to South Carolina in August 2016 when reports emerged of clowns attempting to lure children into the woods. This incident, which was later determined to be a hoax, sparked a wave of similar sightings and reports across the United States and in other countries. So, as we conclude our exploration of clowns, I ask you, what do you think about clowns? Are they simply gestures of our fears? Or, is there something even more profound lurking behind that painted grin?